أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين وأصلي وأصلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وخدوتنا وإمامنا محمد بن عبد الله صلوات الله والسلام عليه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I know we are all tired and perhaps we've not had lunch so I will repeat the salam to make it a bit louder Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kai mazai ba a jin ku da kyau. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, let's come to the sisters and our mothers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah, mashallah. You know every woman can be a mother but it takes one special woman to be called a mommy. May Allah bless you all. Barakallahu feekum. Usually I'm the MC of the program. But now I've been asked to talk on a particular topic which is very weird and the moment the shakes come we're going to start talking about uh questions and answers that will be discussed here. Now my topic is about old age, young age before old age. And this was gotten from a hadith of the best man of conduct, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A man that history can never produce his like. And listen to what your prophet is saying. Listen carefully. And you know, Nabi sallallahu alaihi says in the Quran it is not of the believing men and believing women if Allah and his messenger has placed an order that they should go against it. يقول نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اختنم خمسة قبل الخمس Appreciate five things. One of the five things take over them. And you will go and look for the rest four. Because when I give lecture أنا ألقي وأناقش I give to you, I'm giving you. It's going to be interactive in nature. Are you ready? Antum Mustaidun. You go look for the. If anyone knows the. But he says, take advantage of your youthful age before old age arrests you. If you're a young person, say Allahu Akbar here. I can see the older people living saying Allahu Akbar. But does I Sheikh Muhammad Salah say we are going to be young in Jannah? May Allah grant us Jannah. But the problem is this, my brothers of Islam, we all want to go to Jannah. We all want to chill in Jannah. We all want to meet Allah in the best of ways. We all want to meet Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to see with Abu Bakr Sadiq, Uthman bin Anfan, Ali bin Abi Talib, and we are discussing, we want to see with all people but the problem we need to ask ourselves is this are we closer to what they have done for the deen as young people Although as a young person this is a time that you will either make it or break it they say if a person is a fool at 40 then check his youthful age how he was the one thing that perhaps led him to such kind of rascality subhanallah allah has created us in the best of ways Look at the way Allah has created you. But he only created us for one thing. Remember, that Allah did not ask you to pay him. Allah did not say you need to give some cash or some dollar because he gave you an eye. Because he gave you legs. You can see, you can eat. Subhanallah, when last did you visit the hospital? Did you appreciate that? Now Allah gave you this for free. What did he say? The best of ways, but what did he what does he want from you to worship him, to respect him, to not cross his boundaries? Most of us today, as youth, we do a lot of stuff that are most defaming to Allah. We do things that perhaps we are not proud of, and the distance of the Muslims today from Islam is so far very far. The youth, we are not closer to Allah. We are not closer to the scholars. Our parents don't even know our problems. And just as Ashraf talked about our relationship with our parents, we have a bigger problem. We ask Allah to make it easy. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on day of Qiyamah, a man will not go until he's been asked some certain questions. What is that question? 
Allah will ask you, how did you live your livelihood? Do you hear that? Allah will ask you, how did you live your life? And the next one will be, how did you live your youthful age? Subhanallah. And there is no overlap. Living your life is one thing. Living your life as a youth, as a shabab, is another thing. And do you know, amazingly, in the Quran, anywhere that Allah is talking about a youth, if a youth is in the story, Allah will categorically mention that this person was a youth. Do you know that? If a youth is in the story, Allah will say there is a youth in the story. Why? Because of the level that Allah has placed we as youth. Now, who can give me verses in the Quran? We all know the story of Kaf, right? Sotul Kaf. What Allah says in the story? Now, inna hu fitiyatun amanu bi rabbihim wazidna hum huda. Inna hu fitiyat. They were youth. Allah said they were youth because they, they wanted to go back to Allah. They wanted to be closer to Allah. So Allah categorically said they are youth. Who can give me another example? When Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was killing the the what they call it the gunkuna, the idols. Who can remember the verse? Allah said what? He's a youth. Subhanallah. We have some Qurra here. May Allah bless them. And pray for me. That is to show you. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before we go to the hadith. Imagine being under a hot sun. Not like the one in Keno. But a hot sun. And you, you did call, call malu, no tin in your head. And the sun is burning you. Subhanallah. What would you wish for? Wouldn't it be a shade? Right? You want a shade. You want someone to give you an umbrella. You want someone to put a shade on you. But this will be our situation. On the day, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبِ السَّلِمِ A day that your progeny, your money, will be of no use to you except those that come to Allah with a clean heart. But you know what? You can get a shade on that day. Listen carefully. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There are people that will be under the shade of Allah. And one of the people is who? A shabab, a youth that live his life in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the problem is this. Most of us say Allah, but we don't know Allah. Most of us hear Allah, but we think when someone say Allah, they are calling our uncles and our aunties. Most youth have this. I ustazune, kabeshi, ustazune. When they see you coming forward, kabeshi, they say Allah, Allah, yazo, kajira, they say Allah, I shikoyo shi Allah. And he's coming, he's coming. He says, Assalamu alaikum. Kusang Allah. Hey, ya pada Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja. Because we don't know Allah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. Have you ever thought about how awesome, how amazing your creator is to give you everything you have at an ease, yet you disobey him and he still have mercy on you and look at you with an eye of mercy. Well, what did he say in the Quran? وَإِذَا سَعَلَقَ إِبَادِ أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِبُ الدَّعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَنْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي What did Allah say? He said, when my servant asks about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close to him. I respond to the call of the caller when he calls on me. But Allah said, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي When I call you, answer me. Ya Rabbi. Allahu Akbar. How many responses of your Lord? Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala al-falah. Come to success. Your Lord is calling you. Come to success. And you say, I wouldn't give. I'm not ready now. Why is that so? And you know one thing? Kullu nafsin za'iqatil ma. We're all going to go back to Allah. But before you go back to Allah, what is your relationship with your Lord as a young person? What is your relationship with your parent? Now understand this. You cannot know Allah if you don't learn about Allah. You cannot know Allah. Knowledge is important. When, Nabi, when Allah was saying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best man of Kanda, what did he say? 
He didn't say fa'amal, you should walk. He said fa'alam, you should know. This is the best man of conduct, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah is telling him that you know that there isn't any deity worthy of worship. But are you knowing now? No, we don't want to learn the deen. You spend four years, eight years in the university getting a meal ticket to get a job. But how many of us spend two hours, three hours, four hours, even years trying to lend the deen because you know your ultimate return is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Are those who know in comparison with those who do not know? Wallah, you cannot compare them. Why is it that we, we neglect Allah? You know, most of us today, right now, how many of us can comfortably raise their that when they were doing Salatul Zuhur, they were connected to Allah. How many of us can raise our hands? When you were praying Salatul Zuhur, you were connected to Allah. You were excited. Oh my God, I'm going to meet Allah. And you prayed to him. Why? Because we have forgotten the correct concept of Allah. Azza wa Jalla fil ula. But we sang Allah. We take Allah as if yeah, I, I wish I wouldn't. Salah today has become something that let's pray and just move on. Not something that I am craving to meet my Lord. How then can we have a better society? Today, as a youth, one of the most important things you need to always remember and take note of are the kind of friends you keep. The kind of friends you keep. Wallahi, you are very much the person you want to attract. The better the person you become, the better the people you attract. The more rascal and irresponsible you become, the more rascal and irresponsible people you attack, you, you attract. You Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, be very careful, you are in the relief of friends. Be very careful who you take as a friend. Nine times out of ten, if you see a drug addict, his friends is what? A drug addict. Nine times out of ten. So right now, your friends are very important to you. On the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah, we'll be in Jannah. I didn't hear the Amin. We'll all be in Jannah. We'll all be in Jannah. And we'll go and we'll be looking down. Ah, the guy that wanted to take me away from Allah. But Allah guided me. You see, all of us sitting here, it has been predestined that you will come here this time, this moment, at this hour. But the question you should ask yourself is this. After this talk, what benefit is it to you? What benefit is it to you? Are you going to become a better Muslim? Because see, there is no guarantee that anyone that will, anyone ever will of us here, walk out of this door alive. Is there a guarantee? If there's a guarantee, I have price for that. There is no guarantee. So why are we wasting our time not getting closer to Allah Jalla ala Malik? Why? Every day we complain, every day we shout, every day. But what is your relationship with your Lord? Have you built that connection, that love with the one that has created in the best of ways? And you see, you can be the most greatest of sinners. Sin! But never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And I will just give this short story. I want you all to understand the story because it came to me directly. And I want you all to see from the story what you can take of benefit. I went to a lecture similar to this. And when I went to the university, someone called me. And they were like, were you the one that gave a talk earlier? Please, I have a question. Now, when the person called, I did not pay because I was making a research. The research I was making was, if I die as a righteous person, if I die as someone that is a bit closer to Allah Jalla ala Malik, will I still have azab and kabari? Will, my, will the kabari, will the, will, the, will the qabr press me? That was what I was trying to ask and research. So the person called twice and I didn't answer. Now the person called again and I answered. And behold, it was a voice of a female. Now, when she spoke, she said she had a dream. And I was like, sister, I am not a scholar in any way. 
Speaking, people need to understand the difference between speaking. They are orators and they are scholars. Scholarly scholars. Not everyone that comes on a podium is a scholar. We have scholars and orators. I'm an orator, but scholar, there's a difference. So when I picked the call that I should tell her the meaning of the dream, and I was like, I don't know the meaning of dreams. And she was like, uh, she would just tell me, am I related to other people? And I said, fine. She said she dreamt that she was in a car, and the car was moving with her and her auntie, and the next thing that the car flipped, then passed away, and then she saw herself in the and she was bringing fire from her mouth, akramakumullah, and from her private parts. And she was flabbergasted. She was scared. She said, what is the meaning of this? And I was like, you know what? Let me call and ask. I have no me. I don't know what is this. I have no idea. So I called a particular scholar, and he said, Shuraim, tell her to go back to Allah. Perhaps it's a sign. Blah, 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 blah. And then I called her back. And at that time, I didn't have manners very well. I was very direct. And I was like, And before you know it, she began to talk on the phone. And I was like, subhanAllah, where are my manners? Where are my manners? And I said, No, no, no. Actually, I'm not crying because you say those. I'm crying because I have had dinner with more than 17 boys, a'udhu billah. And I was, I caught the call immediately. Why? I didn't know what to say next. I am not a scholar, what will I say? So I caught the call immediately, and then I called back. And the first thing I said to her was the verse of the Quran. قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَعْنِرْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allah saying, tell my servant who have transgressed upon themselves, never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Any of us here that has transgressed upon Allah, Allah, your Lord, your creator, listen carefully. La taqnatumi rahmatillah. Never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And we spoke, we discussed. And she said to me, that, okay, let's get to meet. Let's talk. And I was like, no. Not for the fear of anything. But for the fear of human attitudinal behavior, I might see her tomorrow and I will say, Prince Ashraf, because humans are like that. And she has returned back to Allah, yet I'm spoiling her name. So this is bad. This is terrible. So I was like, let's keep communicating through email, messages, and likes of it, and that will go that way. And then we continue until today. She says she wants to go for Hajj. And she wanted to go for from her. And that was the first Hajj ever. And I was so excited. I was happy. Mashallah, tabarakallah. And then she went for Hajj. The moment she arrived in Mecca, she saw the Kaaba and she could not hold it. She was like, Subhanallah, blah, blah, blah. I love that. I don't want to come back. I want to stay here. I'm about. And uh, you will understand what I mean if you've entered inside the Kaaba. Subhanallah, 2017, I was blessed to be the guest of the king, Salman, to perform Hajj. So it was easy, and we entered the Qabr. May Allah make it easy for us. So you will understand the feeling just by seeing the Qabr, not entering the Qabr. And I was like, Allah, ma barik ya Like that. After a few days, we kept talking. I sent her books on how to perform Hajj and the likes of it. And 2015 was when the stampede happened. Am I right? So this Friday, I was at a masjid in Efab Estate before the pre khutbah I give the pre khutbah there. So I was about to go for the pre khutbah and I got a phone call. And the phone call, the person was telling me that, Asalaamu Alaikum, this is Baban Kazawa Kaza, am I speaking to Shuraim? And I was like, yes, sir, you're speaking to Shuraim. And he was like, he spoke in Hausa, and I will translate. Tarbiyan ko girma ma wanda iya ta tabani a karshen rayuwanta ni bamba ma iyaye na ba kuma she's the only daughter that has respected me that way and guess what he said next amma yau Allah ya dauke ta and i was shocked he said baba ban gane ba what do you mean Allah ya dauke ta he said yes his daughter passed away in hajj during the stampede brothers in islam I felt trembling, and that was my own turning point. 
from my bad deeds as well. That was also my turning point. And I looked at myself, I said, if this happened to me directly, then Allah is trying to also tell me to become a better person. And I said, from, that, from then henceforth, I will relate this story to individual, especially youth. You see, we don't know when we're going to go back to Allah. We might not be fortunate enough for us to have such kind of privilege. He died by pleasing Allah. If you don't die by honoring Allah, Wallahi akaram banza bin Uthman. But the best death is to die pleasing Allah at this age. We all want to go back to Allah in the best of We have family that have passed away. We have friends that have passed away. But the problem is, how do we go back to Allah? Are we, is Allah pleased with what we are doing? You see, every young person you see working for da'wah, every young person you see striving to do for the deen, not because they don't have their life, not because they don't have their personal life, but because they're doing this in order to earn the honor of Allah. They're doing this in order to earn the honor of Allah, that Allah might have mercy on them. So the question you ask yourself is this. What have you done for Allah 20 years of your life, 19 years of your life, 18 years of your life, and the likes? Yo, unkapadi kamutu, or you fall down and die. What have you done for Allah? You are in this conference at this moment. This conference is meant to better you, become a better human being. The moment you live here and you don't impact, then wallah, your coming here was useless. As terrible as, as it might sound, but that is the truth, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying in a very beautiful hadith, he said, you know, but before I give the hadith, I would like to narrate the story attached to the hadith of what happened. A man called Muslimah to Al-Qa'ida, may Allah be pleased with this was the story was related by one of our mashayikh. His name is Maslamatu al qainabi Maslamatu al qainabi is a drunker and a drug addict. His father is a gang leader. So one day, the sheikh was passing by. Shoba was passing by. And he went to Shoba. And Shoba is a great muhaddith, he's a scholar. And he went to him and he grabbed his clothes. And he said, Ma'anta, what are you? And his companions asked him, you know, sorry, Shoba that answered that, I'm a Shoba, the humility in them is amazing. He said, I'm a Shoba, I am Shoba. And he said, Ma Shoba, what is Shoba? And then his companions that were with him said, Who am Hadith? He's an engineer of Hadith. He has the science of Hadith with him. And the man asked him, Hadithni, tell me one Hadith. Listen, he said, Tell me one Hadith. He said, and Fulan bin Fulan, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Iza lam tastahi, fasna mashit. He said, if you don't have shyness, then do as you wish. Did you hear that? The word of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, umba kada kwinya, koba kida kwinya, then do as you wish. And this thing, this statement turned. Muslimatu al Qa'anabi. And Muslimatu al Qa'anabi went back to his mother and said, I don't want to see my friends anymore. I want to go back to Allah. And he memorized the entire Muwatta of Imam Malik. So, my brothers and sisters, let's turn back to Allah before we return back to Him. But before I end this talk, because the scholars will be here, so I will keep talking because I have benefit of being the MC and the speaker at the same time. But before they come in, I want to appeal to our fathers and our mothers. Wallahi, by Allah, we love you so, so much. And we ask Allah to give you Jannah. And we ask Allah to unite you with the Khadijas and the Aishas, radiallahu anhuma. But you need to understand something, mothers. The generation we are in today, a lot of young people are going through problems. A lot of young people want to talk to their mothers and even their fathers, but don't even know how to begin to tell you our problems. 
most of us here, I am under 20, so most of us here are, no, not under 20, yani within the 20 line, right? I'm 20 something actually, but not, not uh, under 20. You know, in Kano, the English doesn't stay very well. <laughs> so, most of us have problems we want to tell you. We want to relate to you. But the problem is, you're very judgmental. Very judgmental. Imagine your daughter comes to you right now and say, Mama, I, I went to school today. Now some when your boyfriend guys, you know, but in kyo. The first thing the mother will, Kina Auka, are you crazy? Some other mothers will begin to ba ba ba. So how will your daughter tomorrow, when she's out there having a perhaps depression, she's depressed, or perhaps having a bigger issue, how will she confide in you? Rather, she will confide in those that will destroy her. So mothers and fathers, you need to have an interpersonal skill of dealing with your children. We love you, but you, you know, we need to come and we need to feel free and tell you our problems. Today, the sister that left here, that talked about pornography and likes of it, or like a lot of young people are into these problems. As a counselor, not marriage counselor, I'm not married, so I do counseling for youth. As a youth counselor, those that come with problems of, you know, addiction is high. And the question you ask them is, have you ever told anyone this? And they'll be like, no. Why? Have you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't tell your mama? Wallahi, my mama will kill me. So mothers and fathers, wallahi, you have to be more tolerant. Listen to your kids. The world we live in today, Bakamon, when the Kuka Zona Baniran, that does this, wallah, is different. Man has attained technological advancement today. The world you lived in yesterday's bag is not like the world we are living in today. This is different. Things are different. You will be shocked at what some of the youth are into today. So I am appealing to the mothers and fathers, please, for Allah's sake. Please, for Allah's sake. This conference that is coming up on the Fifty Shades of Grey, yani, it's good. It's going to help a lot of uh, parents train their kids. I will advise you all to learn from it. When I say the Fifty Shades of Grey, everyone is laughing, mashallah. <laughs> okay, there, there are two Fifty Shades of Grey. The Haram Fifty Shades of Grey and the Halal Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm talking about the Halal Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Hope? Ya Rab. Fifty Shades of Hope. The other one is Fifty Shades of what? Grey, go? Yeah, they said yes, they know actually. We have exposed them. <laughs> May Allah bless you all. But this conference is very important for parents to learn about their kids and try to see how they can help the ummah. May Allah make it easy upon us all. Okay, I'm losing my words already. The words are going, and I don't know what to say next. But let me officially end my lecture with this, and I'll continue with the MC. Uh, May Allah guide us all. May Allah bless us. May Allah grant us a proper sincerity of purpose. May he continue to give us ikhlas and give us people who will advise us. And just before I go again, you know, a lot of you all want to also meet a lot of people to seek for advice. And subhanAllah, there was a time I was thinking of starting something with my car and someone sitting right here told me, Shuraim, don't do this. And I was like, but it brings money. I need to start taxifying myself with the car. Or Uber. And he said, no, this is not your calling. Your calling is this. Do this, do this. And I was like, no, I want to get money myself. And he said, no, there are other ways to get money. If I had gone for the Uber myself, driving it, I don't think I would be here. Will I be here? I won't be here. And before I came to the podium, he told me, I <laughs> We ask Allah to bless all those who advise us. And to those who Allah has blessed with the ability to advise other people, you should know that it's an honor Allah has given you. Allah doesn't give this honor to people anyhow. It's an honor that Allah has given you. Uh, we ask Allah to forgive us. Ya Allah, we crave your indulgence not to use our sins against us. Ya Allah, we beg you to guide us aright. Ya Allah, we beg you to make everything easy for us. 
Grant us the highest rank in Jannah, Ya Allah. Most of us that have problems, Ya Allah, you know us. Most of us that are trying to live a particular sin, Ya Allah, have mercy upon us. Make it easy for us, Ya Allah. Our parents who are sick, those who are already born, Ya Allah, grant them Jannah and those who are sick, grant them good health. The kids that were kidnapped here in Keno, may Allah bring them back safely to their homes. May Allah bring them back to their mothers and their fathers. May Allah bless Nigeria with a good leadership. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfirullah wa atubu ilaik.